Hey everybody, this is Andrew Geller from Atlantic GMAT here with another video explanation using the online whiteboard practice tool from MBA.com. We're using this tool because it's the era of online GMAT, and we want to give you a sense for best practices on a variety of questions that you might encounter on your GMAT online. Just a quick note, if you are taking an in-person GMAT with a pen and a pad, you're still good to go with this explanation. We're just adding some stuff for the online whiteboard so that people have a sense for how to use this tool on their online GMAT. So the first step is to define the question. For this one, there's not a heck of a lot to write down, but I might just, uh, just to get the ball rolling, define that we want to go for the largest integer. You've got variables in the answer choices. That's a clue for picking numbers. And I think that's a really, really good strategy here. You just want to scan the question to make sure that you understand the constraints. And the only one that we have is that uh, Q is an odd number. So let's just pick an easy odd. I would go for 3. So let's just write that down, that Q is equal to 3. And then we've got consecutive integers with 120 as the median. So we can just jot down to three integers, right? Because we picked um, three for the number of integers that we have. And 120 sits in the middle. The question is asking for the largest of these integers. So we're looking for 121. So the name of the game is plugging in uh, three for Q in the answer choices. And we want to output 121. Now let's go ahead and follow through with the execution. And take your time with the arithmetic. Never rush this stuff. It's not about uh, being really speedy with your calculations. It's about being uh, thoughtful with them so that you can be as accurate as possible. So let's just plug in Q. And I'm just kind of doing pieces of this. You may have your own way that you want to like tackle the arithmetic, but this is how I... I like to do it. So A is getting us 121. So that looks pretty good. Let's take a look at B. I can see right away actually that B because of the three halves is going to get us a non-integer. So that's not going to work. And pretty much anything that has the divided by Q divided by two is not going to work. So C is out. And then D has actually the same, well, a similar problem that it's too small. There's no way that 3 plus 119 divided by 2 is 121. And E has that same magnitude problem, so that's out. So we're looking at A. A couple of takeaways here. One, when you've got variables in the answer choices, consider picking numbers. If you're not comfortable picking numbers, try to overdo it for now, just so you get a sense for how to do it and a sense for when it makes sense to. The other takeaway is the arithmetic when you're plugging back into the answer choices. Often you're going to see shortcuts. You're going to see things that like, are really obviously not working. For instance, B and C creating a non-integer when we know that we have an integer. And D and E being way off in magnitude so that you don't even have to do the calculation to see that they're way too small. Hope you found that video helpful. If you did, go ahead and hit the like button. Subscribe to stay updated with new content. And from everybody here at Atlantic, good luck on your GMAT studies, and we'll see you next time.